Hello students and dear friends. In this video, I will discuss the five questions based on the Newton's ring experiment, which is an important experiment in all the undergraduate programs in different university for the physics lab course. So Newton's rings are named after Isaac Newton, who was the first to observe this effect in 17th century. And these rings are series of concentric circular bright and dark fringes. And when a plano convex lens is put on the top of a plane glass plate, then there is a small thin layer of air is formed between the lens and the glass plate. And Newton's rings are formed by the interference phenomena due to this air film between the plane glass plate and plano convex lens. And the, the film thickness, it varies from zero at the point of contact and it is increases gradually. And this kind of increase is known as the wedge-shaped film. So Newton's ring experiment can have uh, three objectives. One is to determine the wavelength of monochromatic light source and to determine the refractive index of given liquid and the third objective to find the radius of the curvature of plano convex lens. And the principle of this experiment is the interference of light. Now we will use the Newton's ring experiment to determine the wavelength of monochromatic light source and for that we will need the plano convex lens, glass plate, sodium lamp, traveling microscope and optical arrangement like this. And when monochromatic light uh, reaches here to glass plate which is at 45 degree and then light will be reflected to this assembly and using the, uh, the reflection of light from the air film we will get some concentric dark and bright rings and using these dark rings or the diameter of these rings we can find out the wavelength of the given source lambda. So diameter of nth ring is given as dn square equal to 4 and lambda r and the diameter of n plus p ring is dn plus p square equal to 4 n plus p lambda to r and if we subtract 1 from 2 then dn plus p square minus dn square equal to 4 n plus p lambda into r minus 4 and lambda r that is 4 p lambda r so lambda equal to d n plus p square minus d n square divided by 4 p r so if we take the 11th ring and 9th ring for the measurement then we can write d 11 square minus d 9 square divided by 4 into p means the difference between the these two rings n plus p and n 11 minus 9 that is 2 so if, if we are taking the difference of 2 ring uh, 11 and 9th then p is 2 if we take suppose 12 and 8th then p will be 4 so using this formula we can find out the wavelength of the source by measuring the diameter of the rings and the procedure is first we have to focus the eyepiece on the rings central ring is dark in the case of reflected light and then we have to move the cross wire at one suppose we first measure the left side so first we have to measure suppose 13th 11th 9th 7th and like this in left hand side and again we have to repeat this procedure on the right hand side also and then uh, we take the difference of right and left and then we will find the diameter of different rings and then we can find out the lambda using this formula. Now we will discuss the basic fiber questions on this experiment. So first question is what are Newton's rings? So Newton's rings are dark and bright rings or these are the interference fringes formed due to the presence of the air film when a plano convex lens is placed on a glass plate. 
what is the superposition principle in case of the light wave when two or more waves are present in a system the resultant wave at any given point is the sum of the individual waves at that point and this whole phenomena is based on the interference so next question is define interference of light or what is interference of light so interference of light is a phenomena that occurs when two or more waves of light come together and the amplitude added up in the constructive interference and they are cancelled out in destructive interference what are the conditions for interference of light so for the sustained or continuous interference of light the sources sources should be coherent and the sources must be monochromatic and the amplitude of the interfering waves should be equal or nearly equal so this is a double slit experiment it was done by youngs thomas young and in that case we have a two slits are there and then we can see the bright and dark fringes on the screen so this was just uh, young's double slit experiment and now the next question is what are coherent sources of light so coherent sources of light which emits the light wave which have the same frequency or wavelength and they should be in the same phase they these two waves are in the same phase or they should have a constant phase difference then we can say that these are the coherent light sources in case of the laser the all waves are they have in the same phase and that's why these are coherent light laser light is coherent and if we have a light from normal bulb then there are these light waves have they they are not in phase or they are not coherent so we are getting the incoherent light from the normal bulb or incandescent light so now next question is what are the different classes of interference there are two classes one is division of wave front and in that case the incident wave front is divided into two parts by utilizing the phenomena of reflection refraction or diffraction suppose here we have two slits and this wave front is divided into two wave fronts and then we get the interference pattern here so young's double slit is one of example and the other one is division of amplitude the amplitude of incoming beam is divided into two parts either by reflection or refraction and here the examples are newton's rings and also michelson interferometer here in newton's ring experiment the incident ray is reflected from the this air film and then we are getting the interference pattern or the newton's ring so next question is how the newton's rings are formed so they are formed due to the result of interference between the light wave reflected from the upper and lower surface of the air film so air film is between this glass plate glass plate and plano convex lens why the central ring is dark because at the center the condition of minima is satisfied and that's why it is dark ring because at this point the two interfering rays are opposite in phase they have a phase difference of pi that's why they produce the zero intensity or condition of minima so that's why the central ring is dark why the central ring is bright sometimes in case of the reflected light as we have seen in last slide that usually the interference uh, fringe Uh, should be dark in the case of reflected case central fins but this appears white sometimes because of the dust particles so to remove this problem uh, we have to clean the lens and the plane glass plate so that we can get the 
dark fringe at the center why the fringes are circular the fringes are circular because of the spherical shape of the lens and which causes the light to focus into a circular pattern and the thickness of this air film between the plano convex lens and the glass plate the thickness is varying gradually it is like wedge shaped film so the diameter d is different at different thickness and if uh, the lens is cut from a cylinder then the interference pattern will be straight lines so what will be the difference in rings if yellow light is replaced with the red light so there will be same pattern of rings we will get the pattern in both the cases but the, the diameter will vary as the diameter depends on the wavelength of the source red color have higher wavelength so the diameter will be higher for the specific ring in case of light, red light as compared to the yellow light because d n is directly proportional to the lambda to the power half so when lambda is increasing diameter will increase in case of the red light or red source so what will happen if we use white light instead of yellow light then if we replace the white light in place of the monochromatic light we will not able to see the clear rings and instead of this monochromatic fringes we will see the fringes of all the seven colors rainbow colors so like it is like baby or so we will see the colored fringes so are all rings are equispaced the answer will be no because of this relation tn square equal to 4 and lambda r and if we put values of n equal to 1 2 3 4 and then we will see the spacing of, for the higher orders it gets less means rings gets closer when we go away from the center why an extended source is used in this experiment and what will happen if we use a point source so extend, extended source of light or it is also known as a broad source is required to see whole of the film simultaneously suppose here it is extended source so we can see the more area or whole number of rings through ips but in case of point source we will see very small or only very small region here the uh, this area is uh, out of our focus or out of ips only we see very small region in newton's ring experiment why the glass plate is inclined to 45 degrees the angle uh, between the incoming ray and glass plate is 45 degree to make that light rays goes to 90 degree or they fall normally on the plano convex lens then the angle of incident and reflection may be zero in that case and then we can take the value of cos r as 1 for the calculations so why you use monochromatic light for this experiment and what is the wavelength for sodium light so monochromatic light is used to see the clear and distinct rings in the interference pattern so that's why the monochromatic light is used and the average wavelength for sodium lamp is 5893 angstrom or 589.3 nanometer and sodium light have two wavelengths 5890 and 5896 angstrom but the distance between these two wavelengths is very small means they are very close the distance around 6 angstrom or 0.6 nanometer so it is considered as a monochromatic source with average wavelength of lambda 5893 angstrom so what is the construction of sodium lamp sodium lamp is a u shaped glass tube with two electrode of tungsten which are coated with the barium oxide and this tube is filled with the neon gas at a pressure of 10 mm of mercury and some species of sodium are put in this u shaped tube 
and this tube is enclosed in a vacuum jacket or vacuum glass jacket to avoid the heat losses so this is the construction of sodium lamp and why initially sodium light is pink or red initially if we switch on this sodium lamp uh, the light is uh, pink or some uh, reddish so it is due to the this inert gas neon is filled in this tube so initially the discharge discharge take place only in this gas neon gas is there and it radiates the pink or red light due to this neon gas and after few minutes suppose after 10 minutes or so it becomes yellowish due to the sodium vapors so that's why initially it is pink or red but after some time the sodium vapors will make it yellow so how can you determine the radius of curvature r for plano convex lens so usually the r is given in the experiments and it has a fixed value but this can be also determined by spherometer or by boys method so here we will discuss how we can find out the radius of curvature using spherometer so spherometer is a device like this it have three legs and one scale is there and the radius of curvature can be determined using this formula capital r equal to l square by 6h plus h by 2 and this l is the distance between two legs and h is the difference of the readings of the spectrometer when it is placed on the convex side of the lens and when it is placed on plane surface so it is the difference between these two readings h is that l is between two two legs and then we can find out the radius of curvature of this convex lens why should a lens of large radius of curvature be used in this experiment because we know that the diameter of the rings depends on the radius of curvature and it is proportional to the under root of this r so to get the rings of large diameter large radius of curvature lens is used and also this will reduce the errors in the measurement of their diameter and usually this value of r is around 100 or greater than 100 cm in place of the convex lens if the film is formed by two glass plates then will you see the newton's ring or not and why so in case of the wedge shaped film between two uh, flat surfaces we will see a fringe pattern of straight line like this this is due to the film thickness is constant along this uh, straight line parallel to edge of the wedge and therefore the fringes are straight and parallel to each other if we use the two flat glass plated plates and instead of reflected rays if you look at the transmitted waves what do you expect to observe so we will also see the newton's ring in the transmitted rays because we have seen till now the interference pattern due to the reflected waves r1 and r2 now we will see if the transmitted waves they will also interfere and they we will also get the newton's ring in case of the transmitted light but it is complementary to the reflected case in the reflected case we have the central ring is dark and we have the pattern like this but in case of the transmitted case the central ring is bright and like this so it is whatever here the dark ring will be bright again the second here bright ring will become dark so like it is complementary to this uh, the pattern for reflected keys and the center of the set of circle is bright in case of the transmitted light and there are therefore the bright rings are measured instead of the dark one in case of the transmitted interference pattern so if newton's rings apparatus is dipped in water or in any liquid then will you get the rings 
and what will happen with the diameter of the rings yes we will get the rings if we dip this whole setup in the some liquid and the diameter of the rings will decrease because of this formula dn square equal to 4 and lambda r by mu so if uh, mu for water is 1.33 or some for liquid it is greater than 1 then that's why dn square will be less so diameter will be less for uh, in case of the liquid as compared to diameter in air What will happen if the glass plate is replaced with the plane mirror in the Newton's ring? So if we replace this with mirror, then we will not get any interference fringes because from the mirror, most of the light will be reflected and we will see, we won't uh, uh, see the uh, interference pattern. We will get some uniform light or uniform illumination. So no interference pattern will be seen in that case. What will happen if we replace this plano convex lens with plano, con uh, plano con concave lens? <coughs> so instead of plano convex lens, now if plano concave lens is used, so we can understand now the thickness is highest here and thickness is zero at the corners. So the fringes will also be circular, but in the in this case the order of the rings is reversed. Now the question is how to determine the refractive index of a given liquid using Newton's ring experiment. So first we will, we will measure the diameter in air. The diameter is under root 4 and r lambda. And then we will fill it with liquid. And then again we take the diameter for nth ring. So dn liquid equal to 4 and r lambda divided by mu un, under root mu. And then if we divide this dn air with dn liquid then um, these terms will be cancelled out only equal to under root mu is there so mu can be calculated by measuring the diameter in air divided by dn in liquid so dn square in air divided by dn square in liquid will give us the refractive index of the liquid so give some example of thin film interference in our daily life one example is that on a road, if there is some water and a very thin layer of oil is on that water, then we will see the different colors or this kind of pattern on the oil film due to the sunlight. And also, if we make some soap bubbles, we, or we can also see different colors due to the thin film interference also also we can see the peacock feather or wings of a butterfly they do not have any color they do not have any color but due to the interference when light strikes with these structures then we can see some colors in this feather or in the wings of butterfly so these all structures are colorless but we get different color due to the interference of light. So what are the applications of the Newton's ring experiment? So it is used to determine the wavelength of light of a monochromatic source. And it can be used to determine the refractive index of a liquid. And it, this experiment can also be used to determine the curvature of the surface in case of a lens or a mirror. And for testing of different surfaces, it is used because the surface makes a interference pattern when placed in contact with a, a flat glass surface. So we can test whether the uh, surface is plane or not using this kind of interference experiment. So thanks for watching this video. And if you have any queries or suggestions, then please write in the comment box. And in next video, we will discuss the viva questions based on the diffraction grading experiment. So if you are new to this channel, then please subscribe and press the bell icon for the notification. Thank you very much.